my, also, also the, my, <laughs> everything is wireless in my house. You know, the, all the computer stuff and some other stuff. But yeah. I always also keep my connection, my line connection, my heart connection connected. So I have both of them connected. He says, you don't need them. You don't, this is the, this is, you know, the, the 21st century. You don't need that stuff. Just get rid of the wire thing. So he unplugs it. Then when he leaves, I put it back in. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to, I want to take a chance, you know, just in case. But uh, as long as I have it here, I it's a red yeah, yeah. line. So, anyway, all right, we have um, Yud Gimel. Yeah. Uh, we may write it, we may write it get for a man, even though his wife is not with him, and a receipt for a woman, even though our husband is not with her. Provided that we recognize them and the husband pays the fee. We may write a document for a borrower, even though the lender is not with him, but we do not write a lend for, write for a lender unless the borrower is with him and the borrower pays the fee. We may write a document for a seller, even though the buyer is not with him, but we do not write for a buyer unless the seller is with him and the buyer pays the fee. We do not write documents of betrothal and marriage except with the knowledge of both parties and the boom pays the fee. We do not write a sharecropping contact uh, or a rental contact a contract uh, except with the knowledge of both parties and the tenant pays the fee. We do not write documents of designation or any, uh, or any court documents except with the knowledge of both parties and they both share in the fee. Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamil says the two of them write two documents, one for each party. One who paid part of his debt and gave his loan document to a third party and said to him, if I do not pay you between now and such and such a day, give him his loan document. If the time came and he did not pay, Rabbi Yoshi says she should give the document and Rabbi Yehuda says she should not give it. Okay. Okay. Um, so his, his document got erased. Well, um, it's, I think there's, there's a bit of a muckluck is whether his document actually got erased or whether it's starting to fade and he's worrying that the um, mm. that that it's going to fade and he's not going to be able to claim his debt. Okay. Um, Aedin, I love Aedin. So he brings Aedin along with him to Bastion and uh, he, he say that this is that uh, he borrowed, that uh, he, he lent this money to so-and-so. And the Bastion comes and, and, and makes a and and makes it a, a little fix over here. So it makes a new they make a new star that says ish ploni ben ploni nim chach star of yom ploni. His uh, so his his star got uh, was was erased on such and such a day. U ploni u ploni adab and the so so and so were his witnesses. Okay, and now um, the the question that's not dealt with explicitly in the Mishnah over here is uh, what date to put on the star. Hang, oh, is that hang on? Have I got this right? Uh, okay, so no, no, no right, it, it, they rewrite the they rewrite the, the star and, and say when the when the date was from, so that he doesn't he doesn't weaken the 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 creditor's claim because if he makes the date later, then somebody who has an earlier document can uh, can can have first dibs on the on the property if he needs to. Okay, Mishe Param Miktas Kobo. So he has somebody who has paid back part of his loan, yeah. and the um. And the uh, the lender doesn't want to write a receipt for the amount that he's uh, that he's received. So uh, I'm, why wouldn't he want to write a, a, a receipt? Or, oh, oh no, the question is the question is what should they do? Should they should should he write a receipt or should he rewrite the loan document? Rabbi Yehuda Omer Yachit, Rabbi Yossi Omer Yiftov Shabbat. So the chloek between Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi and Rabbi Yossi is whether you whether you should write out a receipt. Or whether you should uh, whether you should write out a, a, a brand new loan document. Right. Okay, they so says that's not that's not right. Now the now the data is going to have to look after the shovar and and protect it from the from the mice. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, rather rather let him rather let the the creditor. Who's who's got who's already got the upper hand? Let him let him uh, rewrite the document and uh, and make for a smaller amount. Amalo Rabbi Yossi, kach yapelo. That's fine. It's, but rather that the law yura kofa because Rabbi Yossi is is under the assumption at this point that um that in order to rewrite the document they're going to have to rewrite it with today's date, and that that's going to weaken his claim against other creditors. So, so Rabbi Yossi says rather you should uh, so better that he should uh, that he should have to look after the the the, the receipt in order to protect himself. 
And actually, the halacha is not is is not like either of them. Rather, the the, the what they do is they go to based in, and the based in reissues the star in the smaller amount, but they backdate it. Oh, so, okay. so, it's got the, so it's got the same date as the original star, uh, but just with the lesser amount. Okay. Uh, Mishnah Zayin, Shnei Achin, two brothers, Echad Oni Echad Ashir. So one is poor, one is rich. Uh, so in their father's estate is a bathhouse and, uh, and an olive press. Now, a bathhouse and an olive press is very useful to the wealthy brother because he, he can use the bathhouse for himself and, and luxuriate, and he can and he can use the and he can use the olive press for his for his for his oil business. But the poor brother would prefer to have cash. Thank you very much. Okay, so so there's a dispute between the brothers. The the, the poor brother wants to ha wants to sell it and get the money, and the rich brother wants to use it. Yeah. Asan the Sakhar. Now, what happened? It all depends on what the father was using it for. If the father was renting these things out already, Sakhala then they must carry on renting it out, and the and the income comes uh, it basically goes into the pot of the inheritance, and the two brothers share uh, share that equally. Asan Atman, however, if the father had made it for his own use. So then the, then the rich brother can say to the poor brother, get yourself some slaves and they can wash in the merchats. So buy, buy olives. Come and use the, use, the, use the olive press for your own olives. So he can be, you know, if he wants, he can, he can be callous and just say, sorry, brother, you know, this is, this is the way it's always been. We use these things. They're not, they're not for rentals. Okay. Or else he can say, "Listen, if you want to, um, you know, you can you can buy out my piece, or else I'll buy out your piece." Yeah. Okay. And but and if the and if the if the poor brother doesn't have the money to buy it out, then too bad. Okay. Shnayim shehayu beir achas. So, um, two people who are in the same city. Shem echad Yosef bin Shimon v'shem acher Yosef bin Shimon. Two guys with the same name. That happens. They can't take a, a, a take out yeah. against each other because each one could claim that he's the he's the lender yeah. and he's the borrower. And other people also can't take uh, out loan documents against them because it might come out that they that they're pointing to the wrong Yosef bin Shimon. Now this is the sort of thing that of course nowadays we we obviate by having a two that's a hood. <laughs> okay, but you'll see where Tudat Zahut comes into it. In, a, in the days before you have Tudat Zahut, what you have to do, before we get on that, so if a guy has, has, has lent out money to, to a bunch of people and he finds he's got a shtar that says that the, 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 the debt of Yosef in Shimon has been settled and he's got debts against both of them, he's got to, then he's got to forgive both of them. Because he doesn't know which one it is, he can't claim from one of them. Right. Okay, so if you want to do uh, if you want to do business with Yosef bin Shimon or Shimon bin Yosef, uh, you know Yosef bin Shimon, uh, then what are you what are you going to do? You have to you you want to you want to be able to do business with these people. They want to do business, and not to, uh, people say no, I can't do business with you because there's somebody else with the same name. Yishaleshu, go back a third generation. So you have Yosef uh, Yosef bin Shimon bin Yaakov. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, and yeah, as, assuming that they have different, that their fathers have different names. <laughs> and if their fathers have the same names, if they will siman, then they can put a siman as uh, like the, the, the tall one or the the one with the mole on his cheek. That's what I was going to say. They need to make some kind of siman on there. So right. right there. <laughs> and if they didn't have it, if they, if their looks were the same, kohen, <laughs> then you can also put. If he's a coin or a levy or whatever, which is interesting that that shouldn't have been one of the first things before you got into Simani. Um, but again, if that's if that's easier, uh, if it's easier, you can um, uh, the the Tura is, is is the obvious solution in our times because that is uh, obviously unique per person. Do they have something like that in England? We don't have anything like that in America except Social Security card. No um, so no. South Africa, South Africa has a South Africa, South Africa. Identity. Yes, South Africa. You have an identity number. Um, I don't know what the UK is up to. Uh, I, so mean, I, mean, I, I assume they also do. And, and the US, you've got your social security number. 
they, they don't give that out too much. As a matter of fact, when they ask for it, sometimes you can say, I'm not going to give you my, my social security number. You know, the, 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 it's a whole big thing. Usually, usually the last four digits are enough to, um, to right, yeah, the last one, right. Although, I mean, I, I, I worked for a company uh, some years ago when we were um, dealing with that bankrupt debt and we had to identify, once a court issued a, a bankruptcy order on somebody, we had to go scrub through like uh, General General Electric's uh, card uh, card accounts to see any of their accounts, are they, are they marked as bankrupt or not? And we, and we have to mark them bankrupt if they, if they are. And, and sometimes the, the match wasn't exact and all we had was the last four digits of the social security number in it. It happened often enough that yeah. somebody had the same last four digits um, with the same name. Same name, too. Yeah, same name. Wow. Yeah. Sounds I mean, like I mean, they're 10,000 10, unique last four digits. So if you've got, uh, if you've got like a John Smith. But <laughs> yeah. It sounds like identity theft almost. You know? <laughs> Anyways. Um, okay. How may I live north? So a guy says to his son, he's dying, and he says to his son, Star Bain Star Parua. There is one document in my uh, among my my credit notes that uh, that has been settled. And the and the son says, which one? And the father says, <laughs> and now the son uh, it doesn't know which one has been settled. Any of days, who Star Kulan Peru in? Then he has to say, okay, I can't claim any of these debts because. Because Chas Shalom, I should claim money from somebody that it's not uh, that it's not right. Okay. However, if one of the if the the two credit notes are up against the same person, then you can say, okay, so the smaller one hasn't yet been settled. Now, what happens if somebody lends uh, lends to his friend um, with a guarantor? I'm not lending. He said, "I'm not lending to you unless you've got a guarantor." Um, then, okay. So then, if there's an Arab lawyer, paramina Arab, he's not allowed to go directly to the guarantor. Uh, he first has to go to the to the debtor and say, "Pay me back." And the and the back and the and the debtor says, "I can't pay back." Then he's allowed to go to the guarantor, okay, but he can't go directly to the guarantor. If he says. On, on condition that I can that I can uh, claim the debt back from whichever of you I prefer, then he's allowed to go to the Arya first. He says, but if the if the if he knows that the, the borrower's got assets, then he shouldn't he shouldn't go to the Arya. He must go to the to the borrower first. Why should the Arya suffer? So a guy said, "Okay, I'll be uh, I'll be a guarantor." To, he says to the woman, uh, he, "The woman's a little bit nervous about getting married to this guy because she knows he's a bit of a flighty guy." And some other guy comes and says, "Don't worry, I'll I'll guarantee the the kasuba. So then Taka, the the husband divorces her, and and she's coming and claiming the kasuba, and the husband doesn't want to give her the kasuba. So now. Um, uh, so now uh, the woman says, okay, you, you guaranteed my kusuba, I want the money now. <laughs> so the guy says, okay, I'll pay your kusuba, but first thing, yadirena hana, I'm not, I'm not giving you the money until your husband swears a, a, a neder that, that you're asr bahna from him. Why? Shema yasu kanunya al nechasim ishto. In case... The husband and the wife did a little deal over there. Oh, there he divorces her. She claims the ketubah from the other guy. And then it says, okay, great. We've got some money. Let's go and get, get remarried now. <laughs> so we make sure that he can't do that. Yeah. Uh, so now there is a document with uh, that contains the, the, the full details of the loan. So there, he his, uh, um, his landed properties are also, he has a lien on the landed properties from the date of the star. Okay, so he's allowed to collect from that if the, if the, if the, if the law defaults. If he just did with witnesses, and then he can only claim from, um, from movable property, from cash and from whatever is liquid. No, that's okay. right? Now, why, why is this? Because, um, because when there's a when there's a star, 
then people know that that they, that, that they, 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 so the word gets out that uh, that there's uh, that there's a, um, a loan out, which means that when a buyer wants to come and buy this property, he must check and say, is there, does this property have a lien on it? So before he before he gets gazumped by the by the creditor coming claiming oh. back the land. Oh. However, if the if there's if it's just a verbal a verbal loan, then it doesn't get out so much, and 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 maybe somebody will buy the land. So we we we, we can't make him gazump uh, the, the the buyers because uh, from a from a, an oral loan. Uh, so he can, brings out an IOU note that's got the the debtor's handwriting that that admits that he's uh, that he owes the money. He still can only um, claim from uh, from li from liquid assets, not from landed assets. Yeah, because uh, because again you've got to have a proper star in order to claim from landed assets. Now what happens if the if an ayev only comes around after the the star has been signed? Okay, then he can only claim from the uh, uh, um, he can only claim from the liquid assets of the ayev if it comes down to claiming from the ayev. Okay, and Rabbi Ishmael confirmed this in a practical ruling. He says he can only claim from the guarantor um, from his liquid assets. Amalo Benanas, so Benanas said, gobe lo And he says, nothing. He gets nothing from the guarantor. Why? What happened to the the guarantor came and uh, and said, "I'll uh, you know I'll stand for it." So why? Why is it, is nothing coming out of it? I'm a little lama. I'm a little hare hachonek es echad b'shuk. Because what? Why did the guarantor suddenly turn up after the um after the the star was signed? If, if, if the guarantor was not on the star, why why did he suddenly appear? It must be. It's like the creditor was coming and uh, throttling the debtor in the shuk and saying, "Where's my money? Where's my money?" And but I'm a law and another kind of matzah chaver of Amr Lahanaklo. Leave him alone. I'll, I'll pay it. I'll pay it. I'll be his guarantor. Patur. Right? Why? Because the creditor didn't lend him the money just because there's a guarantor. He lent him the money without the guarantor. Uh, so, and, and all that happened was that the, the guarantor came and wanted to save the, the debtor from, from being uh, accosted by the, by the creditor. So therefore he says he was just, he was just coming in and saving the, uh, saving the debtor. He doesn't have to pay anything. Ella. What is the Arab who does have to pay? Only if uh, if the if the if the Arab comes and says, lend him and I'll and I'll pay you. Right? Now that's when he has to pay. Because now the creditor is lending it on lending the money on the strength of having the guarantor. Um, Amr Rabbi Ishmael, so Rabbi Ishmael, who's who's been having this dispute with uh, with Ben Nanas, says, If somebody wants to get smart, he should, should deal with uh, with with monetary law. Because it's uh, it, it's a great it's a great um, profession in Torah. It's a great it's a great Indian to to learn learn mamonos. Shehain kamayan and obeya. It's like an ever it's a bubbling stream. Mm. And somebody who wants to learn DNA Mamanos, Yeshamash is Shimon Ben Namas. Should learn from Shimon Ben Namas. <laughs> Funny thing is that the halach is still like Rabbi Ishmael. Even though Rabbi Ishmael goes like uh, you know, lyrical in his praise of uh, of Ben Namas, nonetheless, the halacha follows Rabbi Ishmael that the, the guarantor still does have to pay. Hadron Allah Masechis Baba Basra, and tomorrow is Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin. Okay. Um... Kazaka, uh, Kazaka, um, so, uh, okay. Zion, Zion Dalin. Yeah. One says to another, I am selling you half the field. They, they divide the field between them, quantum, 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 I can't get this. Qualitativity, I forget it. And he, he's, you know what I mean. And half the, and, and half his field, he said, I am selling you its southern half. They divide the field between them qualitatively. Thank you. And he takes equal to his southern half. He accepts upon himself the place of the for the fence, the wide ditch, and the narrow ditch. How wide is a wide ditch? Six handbreadths and the narrow ditch, three hand hand handbreadths. There are those who inherit and bequeath, and there are those who inherit but do not bequeath. Who bequeath but do not inherit, and who who neither inherit nor bequeath? These inherit and these bequeath. A father, his sons, his sons, 
the sons of their father, and brothers from the same father inherit and bequeath. A man, a man his mother, a man his wife, and, and his sister's sons inherit but do not bequeath. A woman her sons, and a woman her husband, and a woman's brothers bequeath but do not inherit. And brothers by the same mother neither inherit nor bequeath. The order of inheritance is as follows. If a man should die and he has no son, you shall transfer his legacy to his daughter. The son takes precedence over a daughter, and all the descendants of a son take precedence over a daughter. The daughter takes precedence over the brothers, and the brothers and the descendants of a daughter take precedence over brothers. Brothers take precedence over the father's brothers, and the descendants of brothers take precedence over the father's brothers. This is the rule. Whoever takes precedence in inheritance, his descendants take uh, precedence, but the father takes precedence over all the descendants. Like okay. she said, it always, it always goes down when you say. Yeah. It is, right. The daughters of... Uh, no, no, we're on to Bab Metzia. That was it? was only one? No, the three. The three already? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I saw the Zion Dalit. Yeah, that's right. You've done three. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Bab Metzia, Zion Tess. One wolf is not an unavoidable accident. Two wolves is an unavoidable accident. Rabbi Huda says at the time when wolves are sent out, even one wolf is an unavoidable accident. Two dogs is not an unavoidable accident. Uh, you do that, the Babylonia says in the name of Reb Meir, from one direction it is not an unavoidable accident, but from two directions it is an unavoidable accident. A brigand is an unavoidable accident. A lion, a bear, a leopard, a bardellus, or a snake is an unavoidable accident. When? when they came of themselves. But if it if led them to a place frequented by bands of beasts or brigadons, it is not an unavoidable accident. If it died naturally, it is an unavoidable accident. If he afflicted it and it died, it is not an unavoidable accident. If it ascended uh, steep mountaintops and fell, it is an unavoidable accident. And if he took it up to a steep mountaintop and it fell and died, it is not an unavoidable accident. An unpaid showman may stipulate to be uh, exempt from such an oath, and a borrower to be exempt from paying, and a paid showman to and a renter to be exempt from an oath or from paying. Yeah. That's it, right? Um, now they also your dialogue. One more. Um, if anyone stipulates contrary to biblical law, his stipulation is void, and any stipulation which is preceded by the action, his stipulation is void. Anything that is possible to fill at the end, any stipulated concerning it in the beginning, his stipulation is valid. Okay. Gitin, we are at uh, Olive Base. Rabbi Yehuda says from Rechem, eastward is considered outside Eretz Israel, and Rechem is like the east. From Ascalon southward, and Ascalon is like the south. From, from Aqua, um, Form should it be from this says form form from Aquid northward and Aquid is like the north. Red Mayor says Aqua is like Eris Israel regarding Gittin. One who brings a get from Eris Israel is not required to say it was written in my presence and signed by my presence. If there were protesters against it, it should be validated through its signatures. One who brings a get from overseas and is unable to say it is written in my presence and signed in my presence, if there are witnesses on it, it should be validated through its signatures. Both Gittin and documents of emancipation of slaves correspond in regard to being taken from Eretz Israel and being brought there. This is one of the ways in which Gittin corresponds to documents of emancipation of slaves. Okay. Yoma. Okay, Zion Hay. The Kohen Godel serves in eight vestments, in the common Kohen in four, in a tunic, pants, hat, and belt. In addition to these, the Kohen Godel wore a breastplate, an ephod, and a cloak, and a golden blade. The wearing, uh, wearing these eight vestments, they are consulted for the decision of the Urmutum. They are not consulted except for a king, the court, and for someone whom the public needs. There you go. One, um, one on Yom Kippur, it, on Yom Kippur, eating, drinking, washing one's body, anointing one's body with oil, wearing shoes and cohabitation are prohibited. The king and the bride may wash their faces and a new mother may put on shoes. These are the words of Rebbe Eliezer, but the comment prohibit this. One who eats the volume of a large date, like it and its pit, or who drinks the volume of both his full cheeks is liable for punishment. All foods combine for the volume of a date and all drinks combine for the volume of his cheekfuls, but food and drink do not combine. Okay. 
Okay, we have uh, let's go. Nice field. Okay, base field. Dung vessels and mud vessels through which the roots can go out do not render plants susceptible to tumor. A perforated flower pot does not render plants susceptible to tumor, but one that is not prefer perforated does render plants susceptible to tumor. What is the minimum measure of the hole? Large enough that a small root can go through it, out through it. If one fills it with soil to its edge, it is like a board that has no rim. There are some items that require hexure but do not require thought, others that require thought and hexure, others that require thought but not hexure, and others neither hexure nor thought. All foods that are normally used for consumption by humans require hexure but do not require thought. And one cuts off flesh from a person, if one cuts off flesh from a person or from a domesticated animal, from a wild animal or from fowl, from the carcass of a non-culture bird or caleb in the villages and all other field greens with the exception of shemarchim and mushrooms. The Behuda says, with the exception of field leek, purslane, and a parsley, Reb Shimon says, with the exception of cardoons, Reb Yossi says, with the exception of calusin. These require thought and hexion. Right. Amila, Ela, Gimbal Dalit. The ashes of the inner altar and the menorah are not permitted for benefit, but are not subject to Meila. If one consecrates the value of the ash initially, the ash is subject to Meila. Turtle doves whose time has not yet arrived, or young pigeons whose time has has not has passed, are not permitted for benefit, but are not subject to Meila. Reb Shimon says, turtle doves whose time has not yet arrived are subject to Meila, and young pigeons whose time has passed are not permitted for benefit, but are not subject to the Meila. Milk of consecrated animals and eggs of consecrated turtle doves are not permitted for benefit, but they are not subject to Meila. In what circumstances do these words apply? Regarding items consecrated for offering on the altar, but regarding to items consecrated for temple upkeep, if one consecrated a hen and its egg are sub eggs are subject to Meila, if one consecrated a she donkey and its milk are subject to Mamila. Any consecrated item that is set for offering upon the altar but not for the temple upkeep, or fit in temple upkeep but not for offering upon the altar, or neither the fit for offering upon the altar nor for temple upkeep is subject to Meila. How so? If one consecrated a pit filled with water, a manure dove filled with manure, and a dove coat filled with doves, a tree filled with fruit, or a field filled with grasses, both they and their con uh, contents are subject to Meila. If one consecrated a pit and it subsequently became filled with water, a manure dump and it consequently became filled with manure, a dove coat and it subsequently became filled with doves, a tree and it subsequently filled with fruit, or a field and it subsequently became filled with grasses, they are subject to Meila, but their contents are not subject to Meila. These are the words of Rabbi Huda. Rabbi Shimon says one consecrates a field or a tree, both share their, both, both they and their produce are subject to Meila because the product the produce is a growth of heckish. The offspring of a mice animal may not be may not suckle from the mice animal, and others would therefore donate milk for the purpose. The offspring of a consecrated animal may not suckle from the consecrated animal, and others would therefore donate milk for this purpose. Laborers may not eat of the dried figs of heckish, or in so too, a cow may not eat of the uh, veg of heckish. And we are done. And we're starting, um, what did we say? We said... Um, Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin, yeah. Sanhedrin.